Hey everyone, today we are taking a look at the most insane AI avatar I have ever seen. Seriously, this is a game changer and when you see it, you'll probably be like me and we're all gonna turn into this lady saying, he's not real. Plus, I've got some pretty massive news coming out of NVIDIA, which is going to affect you whether you follow the whole GPU scene or not. Plus, I've got a look at a piece of emerging AI technology that is straight out of Black Mirror or Star Trek. It all depends on how optimistic you are about all of this stuff. So at this point, we've all seen the various talking head AI avatars. Most of us have probably played around with DID. And while that tech is pretty solid, there is very much a uncanny valley-ness to it, sort of a, you know, robotic nature. Well, check this out. This is wholly AI generated. In 1947 at Harvard University, Rear Admiral Grace Hopper was working on the Mar AI computer. One day, the system stopped working, and technicians discovered a moth trapped between the contacts of a relay, causing the malfunction. It's pretty crazy, right? So that is Joshua Yu, and the avatar is generated via his company, HeyGen. Now, HeyGen has been around for a bit, according to Crunchbase, since November of 2020, which in AI terms is basically ancient. And they have recently partnered with Canva, but what we saw was the new model, so no need to go rush over to Canva and start burning through credits. And if you're doubtful about the validity of this, well, I signed up for the beta, and you can too, the link is down below. And a couple of minutes later, this popped in my inbox. Hi, Tim. Thanks for your interest in our ultra-realistic avatar feature for your use case demo for a YouTube channel that covers AI tech and creativity. So that is either AI generated or someone is forcing Joshua to read these scripts based off of every beta application that comes in and we should probably start organizing a rescue mission. Additionally, what's really impressive is according to Joshua, this model only requires about two minutes of material to train on. So I did wanna take a closer look for some pros and cons here. And I'm gonna do something that I very rarely do, which is I'm gonna get super critical on this. I'm only doing that because this is so good. And I think that it's gonna be really important to be able to spot little nuances like this as we move into the future and these AI avatars get as good as they are, at least for the time being, to have somewhat of a fighting chance of knowing whether something is AI generated or not. The first thing I wanted to take note of was the voice model, which is really super impressive. Joshua obviously does have an accent. There's no judgment on that on my part. His English accent is much better than my practically non-existent Neanderthal Chinese accent. But it is really impressive that HeyGen is able to replicate it as well as it does. We're gonna talk more about that in a second. Now one, I don't wanna necessarily call it a trick, but something that's helping mask some of the inconsistencies in the AI video is the fact that this is split screen. I will say that it is kind of mentally jarring to see two identical performances happening from two different camera angles uh, and two different background locations at the same time. I do think that this was relatively by design as your eyes dart back and forth between the two screens, you tend to kind of miss some of the glitchier stuff. For example, the blinking does feel a little bit off and a little unnatural. Now, granted, this is much better than the last generation of AI virtual avatars that either didn't blink, which was super creepy, or blinked at these regular intervals, which also felt a little weird and robotic. Now, I will say that this might go a little bit too far in the opposite direction, particularly when you pay attention to the model on the right. It does actually seem to be excessively blinking. I mean, it also could be that Joshua has bad allergies, in which case, you know, I feel for you. I will say that the eyebrow movement is really pretty solid. Uh, and the fact that actually when he raises his eyebrows, you can see some like forehead um, wrinkle, wrinkle? Wrinkle crinkles? Wrinkle crinkles? Is that what they call I don't know. I'm going to call them wrinkle crinkles. Uh, that and the fact that you can actually see a bobbing Adam's apple as well. Um, those are all those little details that kind of make it feel like a real person as opposed to sort of that wax figure AI character that we've had in the past. Two other really subtle things that I'm actually super impressed with is the fact that like in this video, you can see there's actually a person that's kind of moving back there a little bit. Yeah, that's a nice touch. And the other thing that I find kind of hilarious is that on this side, I think he has a lav mic that's actually attached right here. That's a nice touch considering that it's an AI generated character and there is no need to have a microphone. Now, the two things that really stand out to me, and again, I wanna reiterate the fact that the only reason that I'm being this critical is because this is that good. You can sort of tell when there's a bit of a buffer issue between the video and the audio. For example, in the Grace Hopper line. Grace Hopper and the Buck. In 1940, it's that kind of jitter moment that feels a little artificial. 
another spot that I noticed it is like this kind of head shake. Um, check it out on the video on the right. Causing the malfunction. Hopper. That sort of head nod uh, after malfunction. But now let's go back and look at it with the video on the left. Causing the malfunction. Hopper. The one on the left works because he's actually saying malfunction and it kind of works as an emphasis. Whereas on the one on the right, because it's happening in a moment of silence, it actually just kind of looks like he has having a moment of vertigo. The other thing that I noticed is the hand movements, which is something that I think really helps sell the whole thing. But as someone who talks a lot with his hands as well, uh, I tend to key in on. So I'm not sure if it's built off of a movement loop or not, but there are some inconsistencies. For example, on the video on the left, uh, take note of his hands. Hopper was working on the Mark I computer. One thing. So that's a hand movement after a sentence is spoken. Sort of weird, right? Again, I want to point out that that is all super nitpicky and like Grace Hopper's bugs will probably be squashed out within the next six months. Hey Jen is also doing some very interesting stuff in the translation space. For example, here is a demo that they had up featuring some famous faces. Muchos datos y encontrar patrones que los humanos no podrían Como detectar en fin. un morceau de crâne, le remplacer et placer le dispositif neural. Grande quantità di vino. Mi capisci bene, vero? Intendo dire che ho bevuto tanta. Agar mujhe ishara karna ho, to main yahan dekh sakta hu ya dekhna aur anuman. Now, what's pretty impressive about all of that is obviously it sounds like the actual person in the actual space, and the lip flap is fairly correct. I leave it to anybody that actually speaks any of those languages to let me know if the translations are accurate. That's something I'm always a little bit wary of when using translation software. After all, there is a reason for the phrase lost in translation. Moving on, this week at SIGGRAPH, which if you're not aware of SIGGRAPH, it's, it's kind of Comic-Con for computer graphics. It's the best analogy I can come up with. NVIDIA dropped some pretty big news. They've been very bullish on the AI space for quite some time, and this seemed to be very much a payoff moment for them. They showcased AI Workbench, which is designed to be a self-assembly kit for AI developers which comes pre-trained with a number of models and tools that can be easily customized, thus saving time on development. They also showcased Omniverse, which is sort of their platform that will take anything from CAD models to Maya and Blender files and Adobe files and sort of natively work with all of them. One use case that they demoed that was really impressive was an AI generated car commercial. And what's really cool about it is that you can actually use the CAD model of the car to generate the model. So you could have a scene in your car commercial in which somebody opens up the hood of the car and you would see the actual engine in. And Bill Awas to do just X'd, no, nah, this doesn't feel right, tweeted that Shutterstock has just launched a text to 360 degree image generation tool that does run on NVIDIA's Omniverse Cloud. And while I do appreciate the flex of what a $100 million GPU farm would look like, um, yeah, so this is actual size, is a representation of actual size. So it's an LED screen, but that is actually what it would look like. Most of us will never own anything like that. God, why would we? The plus side is that NVIDIA has partnered with Hugging Face. So a lot of the models that we've played with on this channel will now be powered by those machines. So it looks like if you're at any level in the AI game, NVIDIA will now have a hand on your shoulder. Next in We Live in a Philip K. Dick Future, we can remember it for you wholesale. The company Wist has an AR VR application that is aimed at capturing your memories so that you can relive them. So it's not quite Total Recall or Strange Days, which I haven't seen in a while. I think I kind of want to go back and rewatch that. But I do kind of like the sort of weird distortions that it has on it. It kind of reminds me of the degrading memories in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, only dreamier and not quite as terrifying. Captures are done with either the iPhone or the MetaQuest with Apple Vision support coming soon. And while I'll say the current logical choice is probably your iPhone, uh, I do think that as AR technology advances and perhaps we do get to the place that Google Glass promised us so long ago, I can see this technology being adopted as the new version of a snapshot. The one video that really struck me was when the memory was played back in the actual location that the memory was captured in. There is something that is just sort of both magical and haunting about it at the same time. I don't know, let me know what you guys think about WIST below in the comments. Uh, you can sign up for their beta at the link below as well. 
Finally, the gang over at Wirestock now has their own AI image generator. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything, but they've been pretty good to the channel. So when they reached out to say, hey, can you hip everybody to the fact that we have our own AI image generator? I was like, sure, we'll take a deeper look at it later on. But in the meantime, if you're interested in playing with it, the link is below. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching. My name is Tim.